Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is Arun Mera here, and it's October the 5th, and tonight I'm going to be discussing about should you buy or set up a dental practice. I'm down here in windy Surrey tonight, um, very windy indeed actually. Um, hopefully wherever you may be listening, um, we've literally got, well, one of our biggest turnouts actually, um, almost full house of attendees all dotted around the country. I know some of you up north, some in the south, and maybe overseas as well. So the purpose of tonight's webinar is to discuss should you buy or set up a dental practice? So I'm gonna keep it short and sweet, but hopefully get the message across of what I think is important to understand. Right, let's move on. Before I, but before I crack on, let me just get to the slides. Right. I'll discuss the current market for buying and setting up a practice, NHS or private, how to raise the money, um, the options of buying a practice, alternatively setting up a practice, and many, many things. I've written 40, but there's probably a lot more ingredients for setting up a practice, and then uh, details about our bootcamp that's coming up um, in about a month's time. But let's crack on. Uh, who am I? Um, it's the photo when I looked a few years younger, but. I'm the owner of Samara Limited, Chartered Accountants, Practice Sales and Financing People for Dentists. So we're involved in um, accounts and tax for literally dozens and well, hundreds of dentists. We also raise finance for people looking to buy practices or set up practices. And we also then help people sell practices. So um, we're firmly entrenched in the dental market. So we know a thing or two about the market pretty well. In addition, a lot of my experience has come from um, being a co-owner of the Neem Tree Dental Group. Um, I'm married to a dentist, Mita, and we now are growing the Neem Tree Dental Group. We've got three sites. We're in the process of starting up a fourth site. Literally this evening, I was just talking about plans and building plans and capital expenditure and all these things that are needed. So that's coming soon. But So you'll learn about some of my experience of that um, over the course of this webinar. I've been working with dentists for what, 11, 12 years. I'm a trained chartered accountant with PwC in London and used to be a, a vice president of Bank of America. But now I'm the MD of Samara and working very solidly in this arena. So let's move on. So let's look at buying a practice. You may be thinking of buying. Um, what are the positives? Well, the positives or the strengths are there's the existing goodwill and patience. Um, you have a history of the business. And there's an existing team, certainly some positives. Weakness can be, as we know, in the marketplace, goodwill values are very high um, and they're probably the highest that they ever have been as far as I'm, I'm aware of. Um, you're not sure what you're buying. Um, it's all well and good to say I'm going to pay half a million, a million, whatever the number is for a practice, but the reality is you'll only ever know what you buy when you're actually in the business, running the business. Um, what are the good bits and what are the bad bits? You could be taking on existing dead wood. You might be buying a bit of team, but the team may be demotivated. The team may be not enjoying all their job. And, and it's your obligation to keep that team when you take them on. So that's another weakness. Another danger or weakness is that you buy a practice and suddenly you take over the list and the goodwill walks out the door when the departure of the principal, when the principal leaves. So you need to manage and understand that as well. And I suppose a big, another big weakness is changing your team's vision. Now remember, the practice was sometimes bought or owned by someone else. Now a new owner's coming in, you might have a very different vision of a business. So trying to change the team um, and get them on board with your vision is not always as easy as you hope it will be, okay? So it's about how you can manage people and how you can um, deliver uh, the goals that you want to achieve. So what's the current market like in the marketplace? Well. It's very strong for buying practices. Um, we put a market, we put a price on a practice, and we get dozens and dozens of people wanting to buy that practice. Um, Max, who heads up our Max Bazzucchini, who heads up our practice sales part of the business, um, is pretty much snowed under by people wanting to buy practices. So, therefore, when there's, I suppose, a unequal, unequal kind of balance where there are more buyers and there are sellers, the prices are always going to rise. In addition, 
corporate activity is very solid. People like Oasis, IDH, Bupa are all active in the market trying to buy good quality practices. In addition, people, there are plenty of dentists out there, I'm sure maybe one of you of them, who've got the resources of parents who may be able to support and help you buy a practice as well to get on the ladder. So as I, as you, as I read this, uh, in the current marketplace, people pay in excess of 200% of turnover now. Um, and when I came into this industry almost 10 years ago, it was just 35% of turnover. So there's been a, what, almost a five or six, or six, almost six times fold increase in the values of practices in just a space of 10 years. Um, if I'd known that before, I guess I would have put my money in. I'm sure everyone else would have done that as well. But hindsight's one of those great things. So the market is active. There's demand. And I think um, we will see the demand remain for the time being as the demand for practices is outstrips the supply. At the same time, going further, the corporates, as I mentioned, they have deep pockets. They're all private equity backed. And they will look to buy successful, profitable um, practices that suit their key locations. But one of the key things of corporates, they will nine times out of ten look for the tie-in, look for a tie-in for the, the vendor. So you might have to stay three or four or five years um, to basically maintain the goodwill. They don't want you to slip out the net and suddenly if you leave the practice, the value drops. So... But increasing in corporates definitely want to tie in, and increasingly we're seeing even individuals buying practices wanting people to be tied and staying for a period of time. However, corporates quite often or not won't pay as much as an individual dentist might want to pay for a practice. So, um, an individual dentist who wants to take over a list and buy it quite often will maybe outbid a corporate. Um, in terms of corporate activity and how they value practices, it's usually done on EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization multiples. Um, basically, that's a measure of profit. Um, so they look at a multiple of profit to buy the practice. Um, bank of mum and dad, as I said, quite a few of these people are associates who've had a few years as associates, but they really want to have their own practice. Um, increasingly frustrated, and they've perhaps reached a a plateau and they want to have their own practice so therefore they'll have parents who might support them or other people in their family might support them to buy them but and as I said quite often they may pay more than a corporate um, in addition in the marketplace the demand for NHS practices is still high um, despite the uncertainty of the contract and what's going to happen I personally think now the issues of Brexit have superseded anything that's going to happen in the NHS. So um, the likelihood of any changes in the NHS contract and short-term contracts or anything like shorter-term contracts, less likely to happen in the current environment because I think the civil service have plenty of to, to do with the Brexit. Um, but people like IDH or my dentist, what they're called now, they've been acquiring corporates and NHS practices mm -hmm. Um, significantly um, and they'll pay a high, high price for it and there's still strong demand for de by dentists for NHS practices increasingly though we're seeing private practices and private prices tend to be slightly lower than NHS but I think more and more people want their own private practice um, and they will typically um, pay a multiple maybe 1.5 times something like that of the turnover for a private practice. Um, we're seeing the corporate activity in this area still strong. We've seen Oasis buying lots of private practices in the last few years. Boop was in the market, and there's even talk of Boop now buying Oasis, which may happen. So then there'll be even a larger corporate group out there. So um, lots of change going on in this marketplace. Um, as I said earlier, there is a risk with NHS practices. Um, there will be a new contract. And I suppose the big point that's been highlighted by the Office of Fair Trading is that NHS contracts um, at, until now on the whole, GDS contracts have been open-ended. Um, but what could happen, and to make it put it more in line with other public sector contractual requirements, they will want to get better value for money and they may tender these out and put them on a five-year limit five-year time, time limit or 10-year time limit or three-year time limit. Not sure yet, but 
there are risks with it. And remember, if you want to buy a practice and it has a five-year contract only, the bank will only lend you over five years. So sometimes it could make it quite impossible to buy something like this. So just throwing that into to think about it. In terms of trying to raise the money, though, um, banks are tighter in their lending over the last few years, but they're still available and there's still some very good deals to be done. So how, how, do, you, how do you raise the money? Well, we have in our team someone called Nigel Crossman, and he heads our head of, head of finance, and he's, out, he's our broker to help our clients get the best deal, whether it's for Santander, Lloyds, RBS, Metro, you name it, every bank out there who's in the sector, he'll find the best deal and negotiate the best deal on behalf of our clients. And his kind of tips are make sure your existing finances are in order um, before an application goes for finance. Basically, get your house in order. Don't have unpaid items or problems in there. Get it nice and tidy. Um, make sure you've done your forecast. So get an experienced accountant to look at your figures to see if you can service the debt if you do borrow. Um, basically, get your house in order. They want to see if you've got management experience. So have you helped out in your existing practices? Or have you been on some courses to help you understand what you need to do to run a business? They're always looking for capable individuals not someone who says i'm a dentist i want to borrow, borrow x hundred thousand pounds it's gone beyond that now they want to assess what you're buying and are you credible can you can you run a business we'll be able to run the, do the clinical stuff well is your cv right have you done the right courses um in essence you need to you're you're are you a safe bet that's really important so if you need any help on raising finance, whether you're thinking of buying a practice or setting up a practice, Nigel and our team is the man to definitely talk to. Um, I mentioned earlier um, practice valuation methods. Well, I think, as I said earlier, the historic way of uh, valuing practices in the UK has always been a percentage of turnover. Um, I've written here 80 to 200 percent, but I saw something nearly 300 percent recently. So. That's 300% of turnover, so that's three times turnover someone bought for paid for a practice. Um, if someone wants it, they'll pay whatever it is. The EBITDA method is, as I said earlier, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. And that's basically profit or a pro or cash profit. And the practice is valued as a multiple of EBITDA. And the current range is anything between four to seven times EBITDA. So if your profit is for, for £100,000, um, you might have to pay £700,000 to buy it. Um, typically, if it's a corporate, they'll pay up to, well, maybe up to about six times. Um, so for every £1,000 extra the profit is, that'll be another six to £7,000 you'll pay in value. So... What are the mistakes I've seen when people buy? I think they pay too much and accept the valuations of the professional, and the professionals I mean by the seller. Um, it's really key to get an independent valuation on the business. Um, so to work out, does it actually stack up for you? If you were gonna buy this practice, what will you actually be earning if you take over the list or if you run the business? Work that out beforehand, worth spending a couple of grand in advance rather than spending a million pounds and regretting what you buy. Don't get emotionally involved. Keep your emotions out of it. Um, do some due diligence on the practice. Research it. Look at their financials. Look at how they run the business. Look at their computer records. Just the more information you have about it before you buy it, the better, and then you can make a better call. Um, get the legals done right. Make sure your contracts, make sure the leases, make sure the staff contracts, everything is there and you understand it. Um, paper record practices I don't like. Um, you don't really know what you're buying. People might not have been seen for donkey's years, and it's really difficult to transfer paper onto electronics. So ideally not, don't buy a paper record practice if you can help it. Um, look at, does the practice need heavy refurbishment? Do you need to put a new chair in? Do you need to put new x-ray equipment? Do you need to buy cabinetry? Do you need to redecorate? Look at how much that's gonna have to be. And if it's quite a lot, then you might think, you know what, it's not actually worth doing it. Um, another mistake I've seen is people buying a practice develop heavily dependent on one particular dentist. And if that dentist walks down the road and opens up, well, you haven't really got much left. So um, 
make sure that's right. And then the last point is kind of goes back to the financing, which I mentioned earlier. Buy a practice so the repayment of the loan is is workable and you're comfortable and it's not going to um, be a burden around your shoulders. And that really goes back to talking to the banks, talking to the brokers like Nigel, who can advise you, is this going to be too overburdening or overbearing for you to, to, to get a loan for? Don't you don't necessarily want to have a, a burden around your neck for the next 25 years and regret what you're doing. You need to be comfortable and you need to be happy um, in doing it. So avoid these mistakes when buying. So I suppose I always put my, try to put myself in the shoes of um, buyers, um, quite often they're not. And I suppose the message here is be much more commercial about it. Um, don't be emotion. Don't let your emotions rule. Um, there are lots of nice looking practices, but may ultimately you need to make sure are you going to be happy there and are you going to make are you going to make a success of it? Um, identify and understand the location and put a business plan of what you think you'll be able to do to grow the business. Once you've got that figured out, then make an offer. Get your financials done by accountants, an evaluation done, um, and then do your due diligence. Don't believe anything you see or hear. Get it checked out. Okay, so get it checked out. Um, in essence, don't trust anyone. Do your own homework. Okay. Um, I had a client very recently. He'd been going through this whole process, got to a very late stage, and it's been drawn on for the last 12 months. Drawn out for about 12 months. It was a long purchase. After 12 months, he gave me a call literally earlier this week. He said, Aaron, what's your advice? My, and I said, what's your gut telling you? And he said, his gut's telling him to walk away. This practice does not seem right. There's something not quite right about it. So he walked away. Um, he lost a few thousand pounds in legal fees and financial due diligence fees. But in the scheme of things, it was quite small compared to a much bigger thing. He could be buying and causing more headaches and problems much further down the line for him and his family. So contrast buying with setting up. Um, strengths i suppose are you start with a clean slate blank sheet of paper it's an opportunity to do something different it is lower cost it'll cost maybe two to 250 to set up a decent clinic in a nice way in a nicely done in a leasehold premises you can choose your equipment you can choose your team you can choose what it looks like and it's an opportunity to build value quickly if it starts going quickly you can suddenly build value quickly um no doubt the weaknesses are no patience you need to be quite commercially focused and have smart business acumen. Um, some patience is required. And it's not on there, but it's not for everyone. It's, 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 it's some hard work here that needs to be organized and done. But if you get it right, it can be very, very, very fruitful and successful. So as I mentioned, it can cost maybe between 150 to 250. It all depends on the level of work and the level of equipment you're gonna go for. But in this current marketplace, 150 to 250 doesn't seem unreasonable compared to buying a practice. But you have to be mind you have to have a mindset of an entrepreneur, one that will require you to build a business from scratch. And as opposed to taking over from someone filling else and filling their shoes. So you have to be hungry, you have to be driven, you have to be motivated, and you have to be super keen to um, make it happen. To make it happen. So what are the essentials for, I suppose, a, a successful um, startup or setup? Clarity. You need clarity. You need to be clear on what you want to create. If you're not clear what you're trying to create, don't do it. Have a tight budget. Um, only buy what you need. Don't be tempted on the latest gadget. Only buy what you need. We've made mistakes in the past where when we did our first clinic with Smeet and my wife and um, we got carried away. Green, naive, the engineer sold us a good story. We bought all the stuff that we needed, allegedly. Didn't actually use it for half of it for a while. So only buy what you need. Location, get this right, target the right profile, and, and half your marketing is done. So get your location really, really, really hone it smart. Um, design, make it look good. Make it, make it look inviting, make people want to come. Um, team, get the right team on how to set it up. And then when you start running, you get the right team as well. And then marketing, get the skills of a marketing team, spend time and money in this area, it'll pay off in the long term to get the right people there as well. 
So comparing the two options, whether you buy or sell, there are different ways, and it all depends on so many variables. But I've, I've, I've said if you had £100,000 of your money to invest, should you buy or set up? Well, with one, if you bought with 100k, you could probably buy a practice of up to 500k in turnover, and you'll need to borrow 400k in t- to over 20 years. Let's say you grow the va- business to about 550k in value after three years, your loan of 400k might be about 370. But if you sold your business after three years, um, your 100k is turned into maybe 180k. Conversely, you do a bank uh, setup and you grow the turnover to about 250 um, and if you sold the practice your 100k is turned into maybe 190 200 so these are all hypothetical and it can work out very different for each scenario uh, and it's unlikely you would sell within a three-year period but the key message here is where can you add value most if you're buying a practice and you think you can add value quickly over a period of time and you can turn it from 500 to a million pounds in turnover quickly it may well be a good idea to um, buy it. The key thing though is to identify how can you add value, can you add new services, can you add new chairs, can you add new space to put more revenue generation. And the setup side of things, um, if you're doing it, you can ramp that up pretty quickly. If you've got good skills and good team, you might be able to um, grow your turnover really, very, very quickly. So there's no right or wrong answer here, but my experience has taught me that buying is for people who quite happy just to buy, get a practice and let it run and work in that practice and make it move. And you, to add value to it might take a lot, lot of time, whereas in a setup practice, if you get it right, you can add value very quickly. And initially in the first couple of years, you might make turnover a couple of hundred grand and that can go to three to four to five and grow quickly. So look at both options and assess what kind of person are you for that. Um, but in essence, I suppose there is there is no right path. Um, it both can work, but you need to take the action. I've seen too often, I've had lots of dentists come through my doors in my offices and talk about buying, talk about setting up, and then I meet them again three, four, five, ten years later. They're still in the same position, they're associate, and they're still pretty kind of um, upset about where they are. The reality is you'll only be able to... Um, make it happen if you actually take action and will it all work out perfectly definitely not it won't work out perfectly perfectly well um, but ultimately you will learn make mistakes learn again and hopefully then try and um, make it even more successful and, and do something so buying versus setting up definitely something to look at both options and one one place you can do this is later this year on 18th of 19th november friday and saturday um at the midland hotel in manchester we are doing a setting up and practice boot camp we've been doing this for the last what eight or nine years myself smita my wife who's a dentist myself up will be talking to dentists on how to do this how to make it successful whether to buy whether to set up um it's intense and it's only for those who are really serious about setting up or buying their own practice. It's our first time doing it out in Manchester. We've got already about 30 odd people booked and I reckon we've only got a few spaces left now. More details are on the link there, setting up and practice boot camp. Um, in addition, um, let me get this right. We will cover a whole range of things, okay? You can read them in details, but I'll quickly go through some of them. Location selection, private versus NHS, vision building, business plans and budgets. We've got some lawyers coming to talk about legal issues, how to raise the money. We'll be talking about CQC. We'll be talking about hiring the team. Um, mistakes made by so many people. Um, building regulations and decontamination rooms. Um, how much you should be paying associates, training your team, you name it, we pretty much cover it. And we've got not just myself and Samita talking, but we've got other team members internally and externally who will be talking on different subjects as well. But we also talk about raising finance, and that's a key thing for a lot of dentists we've learned, and will help you position yourself best place to get the finance that you need for your circumstances, whether it's a buying a practice or whether it is setting up a practice as well. 
Um, so if you want to learn a lot about doing it in a short space of time over a weekend and immerse yourself in it, this event is definitely for you. Um, some feedback we've had over the years, um, real, real mix of people, but the gist of it, I think everyone really enjoyed it. So really, really, really positive and, uh, and exciting. And I know showcases started tomorrow. We've got three day or two, yeah, three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, so for anyone who wants to book a space, um, we're going to, the current price, the RRP is 999 plus VAT. Uh, over 30 places have gone, I know that now. Um, until the end of October, it's 499 plus VAT. But if you call Juliet, my PA, tomorrow or Friday, you can get it for 399 plus VAT. Um, and we've only got four spaces remaining at that price. So her number is 0203 747 3296. And quote this webinar as well. Okay, so. If you want that uh, offer and you want to learn about more about buying or setting up, and tonight's the webinar, which has been going on about 25 minutes, 30 minutes, is just a real splurge and taster of what we're covering and what, we, what, 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 what the benefits are. We'll cover everything that you need to know about buying or setting up a clinic. Um, finally, a little saying that goes here, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. And I think that's so true. Um, don't hesitate. Life can be short. Get on with it and take action of what you want to achieve. Um, I will be at the showcase over the next couple of days. If anyone wants to touch base, have a chat with myself or any of my team, just drop me an email. I'm sure we can organize that. Um, we'll be around tomorrow and um, in that respect, okay? Um, if you've got any questions here, please post your questions now. I'm just seeing if there's anything here to, to anyone ask. Um, if not, we can call it a night. But one question that we've got here is in terms of pricing of how to set up a practice. Well, I said earlier in the it was a question is how much does it how much does it cost to set up uh, a practice? And I suppose the the main the main point is. It costs, well, it varies so greatly. It varies on the location, it depends on the build that's required, but my experience has taught me that it could be anything between 150 to 250, excluding any freehold. So that's kind of the range. It all depends on the type of kit. I've seen people set it up for less than 100,000 pounds, but then the kit is very basic, um, and the building work required is very basic as well. So it varies, varies greatly, okay. Um, in that respect. Um, last question that we've got is about location. Well, location is um, location is key in my experience. Get the location wrong and you'll be working a lot harder for many years and spending a lot of money on marketing. Get the location right and it'll build very quickly. Um, we've always liked shop fronts low, on a high street location. Um, practices opposite Waitrose or opposite a bank or opposite a Starbucks, that type of thing. We've always liked that in that respect. Um, and then another question that we've got, how is it possible to get a private investor as a partner instead of going to a bank or commercial loan? Well, not a bad idea. You can get a private investor involved, but it's usually friends and family first. Um, they'll be the first people to ask. If they can't help, then you'd probably want to try and source some type of angel investors. Now, if it's a startup business, it's unlikely, like Dragon's Den, it's unlikely you'll get funding straight away. You need to prove the business model. But further down the line, you would need to get um, investors involved. So it takes a bit of time, and I think you need to prove your business model before you get any um, anything that you need. Um, a separate question I've got here for setting up a practice for 250 what sort of investment do I have to make good question typically they'd be looking for maybe about 20% so if it's 250 maybe about 50,000 um, 40 to 50,000 to do to, to do it they want to show so you, they want to see you put some skin in the game show that you've got some commitment to make it uh, to put your own money into such a venture um, in that respect another question I have is are there any dental franchise type models? Yes, there are um, various 
dental franchise models out there, which are, which are growing. One of them, to be honest with you, one of the ones we're doing growing in the Neem Tree Dental Group is through franchising. So if you want to know more about that, drop me an email. Um, we are certainly growing through franchising uh, dotted around the uh, country and we're growing that further. But there are other franchise models out there and I think this will be something that will come further down the line as branding and marketing play a much bigger part in dentistry. Um, another question is, what is the average interest rate which the banks are charging to lend about £500,000? Good question. Um, it varies. I really wouldn't want to commit to anything like that. But if you really want to know, I would get you to talk to Nigel, my colleague. He will be able to give you a much better idea because the, the bank's interest rates are dependent on the type of practice you're buying, the location you're buying, your personal financial history, your risk profile. And then from that, they'll make a call, okay, what's the best rate? And the beauty of someone like Nigel is that he'll talk to all the main banks out there, plus the non-main banks, and get to you all the different deals that are available. And only on completion, once you've signed on the dot and line and got the, uh, taken the practice or bought the practice and you've taken the money, then does he get paid, okay? So otherwise it's all free in advance, okay? So um, the, ra the rates can vary so greatly, depending on banks and depending on what and who you are, I guess. Um, Okay, so I think those are all the questions we've had this evening. I'd like to say thank you very much, and I hope you have a lovely evening. It's been a short and punchy 30 minutes, but um, now I have to put my kids to bed because they won't go to bed otherwise. And uh, if anyone needs any help, please do get in touch. Okay, thank you very much. Good night. Bye-bye.